In this video, we're going to be looking at AC solid state relays. In particular, we're going to concentrate on the output circuit. In another video, we will look at the input circuits. Broadly, an AC solid state relay consists of a low voltage DC input circuit that operates some kind of photo emitter, such as an infrared LED. The other side of the circuit involves switching on a usually a triac, perhaps some back-to-back -back SCRs in special applications. In this case, we have a photo detector, a zero crossing circuit, and a triac, which acts as a solid state switch. AC relays might have zero crossing circuits or they might not have depending on the application. At the center of the solid state relays is some kind of optocoupler. In the case of AC solid state relays, we have an infrared emitter such as an LED. But we have a device in this, in this case with the MOC30XX series of optocouplers, a photo triac. And I will get to why you must note these two terminals, T2 and T1, shortly. Quoting the manufacturer's literature, these devices contain a gallium arsenide infrared emitter diode and a light activated silicon bilateral switch which functions like a triac. I repeat, which functions like a triac. We've had these discussions before. Is it a diac or whatever? I'm going by what the literature says. We have a photo triac. Let's take a little closer look at the MOC30XX series optocouplers. Again, we have an LED emitter. According to the spec sheet, we have a maximum input current of 60 milliamps, and the device has a dissipation of 100 milliwatts at about 1.2 volts. What you don't want to do is drive this thing constantly at 60 milliamps. Generally, between 10 and 15 milliamps is sufficient. Let's go over here to the photo triac side of the circuit. You can actually connect this to 250 to 400 volts AC and use it without an external triac. Just put your load in series with the voltage and it will switch on and off fine. I have switched off 24 volt AC panel lamps or even um, heavier AC or DC, well, you'll have to use AC relays and contactors. You can do that as long as its coil current requirements are about 100 milliamps or less. You can peak once in a while. You can hit this with a one amp peak for a few milliseconds, but you can't run it at that. So you're limited at a uh, 100 milliamps AC on this device which is why you often have to go over to a full-blown triac. All right, next we come to the TLP3063 series of optocouplers, but this differs because it has a built-in zero crossing circuit, which means if you look at it from the viewpoint of a sine wave, it will switch on during the, between probably, 5 and 15 or 20 percent of the sine wave starting near zero. It won't switch on say at, uh, you'll switch on it's probably 10, 15 degrees, not at 90 degrees when you have maximum peak voltage slamming into a low resistance load such as a light bulb which it, when the filament is cold is very low resistance. Same problem with, uh, say, a motor, which hasn't had time to build up its inductive reactants, its low impedance. When you first apply the current, what you want to do is start the current, start the voltage very low, around, say, 10 volts, 
and go up to peak. You don't want to switch on during peak. So that's why we put in these zero crossing detectors. There's two things to note here. Solid state relays with zero crossing detectors cannot be used for AC phase control. They're off or they're on, period. If you have to do phase control, such as lamp dimmers or motor speed controls, you will have to go to something like the MOC 3000 series that do not have a zero crossing detector. Before we move on, let's look at something very important that the spec sheets on these things do not tend to tell you. Now the, TMP, the TLP 3063 spec sheet did note that pin 6 was T2 and pin 4 was T1. It's very important to know this because you have to connect these in a certain way to the triac or it probably won't work. <clears throat> Remember, this is still a photo triac, and you're generally going to you're going to connect it. It's going to have a T2 and a T1, and either though the photo detector is built into the gate circuit, you still have to have the T2 current coming from the correct direction. This has not been pointed out in the MOC30XX series optocouplers, either though the spec sheets show that you connect them in a very specific way. All right, let's look at this slide. It is taken directly from the MOC30XX series spec sheet. Notice something here. The T2, they don't mark out the T2 terminals on the triax and they really need to do this. You have to be aware of this because if you swap T2 and T1 it won't turn on. It's that simple. You cannot trip on the gate from T1. You have to trip it on from T2. So you notice that the T2 side of the triax circuit is also connected into the T2 side of the optocoupler. The T1 side on the optocoupler goes to the gate. Now that may sound sort of strange, but that's the way this is working. When this switch is on, you should be able to get the current through term pin 6 out through 4 to the gate, tripping on the triac. Now I can't vouch 100% that if you swap these, it will might not work correctly or whatever but this is what the spec sheet says and you need to be highly aware of this and go by what you see. Alright before we leave this slide let's note a couple of other components. You have a voltage divider here that limits the current through the triac T2 circuit but you have this capacitor and you have this resistor capacitor circuit here. These two items are called a snubber circuit and along with this it keeps electrical noise from getting into the optocoupler and perhaps giving you a false trigger on the gate. That's what these circuits are for particularly if you're dealing with magnetic loads. Here's another example. This time we're driving a magnetic load Again, you have to note where T2 and T1 is and how the optocoupler connects. In this case, this network, um, you notice we have a fairly large gate resistor over here. Again, this will also remove noise. You have to know, note that gate sensitivity on triacs are not all the same. There are sensitive gate triacs where you really need to increase the resistance here or there's just mediocre triacs that work just fine with these fairly low values here. So you have to be aware of T2, T1, gate sensitivity, how you connect the optocoupler to the triac. You need to be aware of all of that when you build the, if you decide to build these circuits. Alright, 
In the next video, I'm going to discuss input circuits, which you see here, which is designed to protect the LED. We will go over this in greater detail in the next video. All right, here's a photo of a commercial solid state relay. They can be AC or DC. The back of it is metal that you can connect to a heat sink, but the input control is from 3 to 32 volts DC. This circuit down here on the input can be the same whether it's an AC or DC relay, which will be covered in a separate video. So thank you for listening to this brief introduction to AC relays. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.